Are you prepared for the coming of the king? Do you know his name? Are you part of his bride? Will he destroy you as one of his enemies when he comes back, or save you as one of his saints? Prayerfully watch this video and learn what we must do to prepare ourselves for the coming of King Yahweh. We're going to get into the, 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 the study, amen. In Revelation 22, we need to, we need to prepare ourselves. Uh, we need to prepare our hearts. A bride, before she gets married, she prepares herself. Uh, back in the old days, before uh, uh, a man would marry his wife, uh, that he would, he would, I mean, we're, 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 on the, we're on the bad end of the string. We, 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 we're just walking around in the wilderness, coming out of the wilderness trying to find our heritage. But way back when, the man of the house, before he married his bride, he would have his farm, he would have his house, and he says, okay, now time to go get myself a wife. <laughs> yeah. We do it backwards. <laughs> we do it the world's way. We don't control our hormones. It's a hor hormonal surge. And I, I need a wife. Well, I need a man. <laughs> and then they go get their wife at, at a bar. They get, get their man at, at, at a dance. And, and they found out they made the wrong mistake. <laughs> they made a bad mistake. I don't, I don't know how you like your steaks, but I don't like the mistake. <laughs> you know. Because you get a mistake, that's medium rare. I mean, amen. So, as the world as the world turns and as the world burns, take a look at it. Take a look how far we are into the birthing situation. Nobody seems to want to hear, but Yahweh still has a plan. As the world, amen, are doing their sports, are being played, and the TV is being watched, and, and people are at work, and they don't want to hear you about the Sabbath day, they don't want to hear you about the sacred name, they don't want to hear anything against their sacred cow, the name of Jesus, uh, and they're eating their food, and food is being wasted, and babies are being eliminated by abortion. People are killing each other and politics are playing at more destruction as the world burns. It's just another day. I'll tell you what. It's not the same world that I lived in when I was a kid. Amen. Not the same world. Amen. Amen. We are living in the days of Yaakov. We're living in troublous and perilous times. What is good is now evil, and what is evil is now good. It's good to take our kids or little girls and tell them that it's all right to be transgender. It's all right to kiss little girls and little boys. It's all right to go to the little boy's room today and the little girl's room tomorrow. Amen. It is turn upside down. It's, it, 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 it's like you said, my brother. Amen. Nobody wants to hear Torah. When you put Torah, when you're born again, Torah is written upon our fleshly heart. Amen. Ezekiel 36 and 26, he says, I'll take away the sterling heart. I'll give you a heart of flesh. He says, I will write my statutes and my commandments upon your heart. So now because it's a love affair, I don't have to do the commandments. I want to do the commandments because that is the fruit of being saved. Amen. I want to I, I want to be a good wife to my husband. I don't have to be a good wife to my husband. I want to get up. I want to shine his shoes. I want to cook. I want to do everything to please him because he's my man. He's my king. He is my protection. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Uh, the reason I put the shoe thing in, my wife, she loves me so much. She... She 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 does my shoes. <laughs> Amen. I said, baby, what you doing? She said, what doing your shoes? <laughs> so you know what I do for my wife? Oh. I put my wife on that chair. Say, baby, kick back. I get myself a chair here, and then I get the, the little nail clippers and clip her nails and, 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 and give her. Yeah, she don't have she don't have to go to the store to get her nails clipped. I, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> she get all the nurse. <laughs> Amen. But but isn't it nice to have peace amongst yourself? Meanwhile, the world is burning. They don't know where they're going. They are in terror, but we are in peace. It's nice to be saved, sanctified, justified in the power of the blood of the Lamb, to be called and chosen by Him. Amen. So here we have, we're, I mean, we're living in these last days. It says, there should be signs in the moon and the stars and on the earth and anguish of the nations in embarrassment. 
see and see. I mean, take a look at all the catastrophes that are happening. We're having, we're having big old hailstorms uh, somewhere, and, and we have floods, and we have volcanoes and tornadoes. Amen. We're living the last day, and they still, at this point, do not want to cry out to the most, whole, the most high name. And they don't want to commit to Him to a Sabbath day and His feast days. Remember, obedience brings blessing, but rebellion brings curses. Amen. And this is the curse for the rebellion. So we need, we need to let the people, hey, time is shorter than short. And you need to go to Revelations 18 or Chasun Revelations 18, 4 through 5. And, and they need to read, hey, come out of her, my people. And if they are his people, they're going to hear his voice. And no other will they follow. Amen. There's a duplicate, there's a counterfeit voice out there in Christianity, and it's called the Jesus voice. And with the Jesus voice, Sunday is all right. And with the Jesus voice, Christmas is all right. And with the Jesus voice, sin is all right. Amen. And, and But there's a voice, amen, that is real, amen, and it's time, amen, to get ready. Amen. So, choose life. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I have called the heavens and the earth as a witness today against you. Heaven and earth are witness against you. I have set before you life and death. The, 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 the blessings and the curses. Therefore, you shall choose life so that you live, both you and your seed. Amen. So when we are in rebellion, it just does not affect me. It affects my wife and my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Amen. Sin is selfishness. Amen. Amen. So the kingdom of Yahweh, righteousness and justice, order, obedience and life. Now we have the kingdom of Satan, which a lot of times it almost seems like the kingdom of Christianity, sad to say. Lawlessness. What do you mean lawlessness? Oh, we keep the law. We don't commit adultery. We don't commit fornication. Well, a lot of you do commit adultery and fornication. You drink a little wet bar, amen, and then you fornicate, you adulterate, and you have homosexuality in your churches, and you don't keep the Sabbath day, and you don't keep it holy, and you don't keep His name. Amen. Amen. And they are the seeds of rebellion and witchcraft. Amen. Ezekiel 22 and 26. Amen. According to this, the day of indignation. This is the day of indignation. We are working up to that day. But people are still asleep. But for the bride and the bridegroom, I mean for the bride, Amen, Yahweh is saying, awake out of your slumber. Awake out of your sleep. We need to be like the five wise virgins. Amen. And keep His commands. Amen. And, and, and get ready to go on out of here. Amen. So catch this in Ezekiel 22 and 26. Her priests have done violence to my Torah. Amen. They have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. And they have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have disregarded my Sabbath. Does this sound familiar? Amen. You talk to people about clean meat and bad meat. You talk to them about pig and not chopping that Piggly Wiggly anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Piggly Wiggly. No. <laughs> but they don't understand that pig is a vacuum cleaner of the earth. We don't eat vultures. And we don't. And so why should we eat pig? You know, I know it's the cheapest thing on the market out there. But it will bring sickness and it will bring disease. It will bring an early death. Amen. We need to come out. We need to come out of the Halloween. We need to come out of the Christmases. We need to come out of the name of Jesus. We need to come out of the Sunday worship. We need to come out of the... Uh, and have no... We, we don't need to have any, any great uh, hope in any Democratic or Republican Party, but only hope in the one that sets up and puts down. We need to have hope that Yahweh, He sets kings up and He takes kings down. Amen. He's going to have His way and He's going to have His say. Amen. They think they're going to get, 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 get tired a lot of things, but God's going to be taken out in the open. And, and, and our adulterers, our fornications, our young men 
amen, I mean, be, the, the, the boom boxes saying filthy language over the, over the sound waves, amen, and, and they try to put us into a position where we cower. Well, we say, well, if I say this and this, it might hurt somebody's feelings. And then I'd start singing a song. Why is everybody always picking on me? Amen. Amen. Hey, if we're in sin, guess what? In Ezekiel, the Bible says if you don't tell them, their blood will be on your hands. Amen. It's obligated of us for the love of humankind. Amen. That they might not end up in, in perdition. Amen. To let them know in a loving, caring way. And I say in a loving, caring, humble, strong way. When I say strong, I'm not saying screaming or yelling. I'm saying having backbone, looking them face to face and saying, baby, if you keep on going the way that you're going, then it's not going to be a good day when you stand before judgment. I don't want your blood on my hands. I'm obligated by Scripture to tell you, amen, you're in fornication, you're in adultery, you're in homosexuality. Yahweh loves you, but He don't love your sin. Amen. He don't love your sin. I know Yahweh loves lesbians and homosexuals. I know Yahweh loves adulterers and fornicators. That's what we used to be. If He loved us, how's He not going to love somebody else? If He took us out of the garbage pit, there's still room for a lot, lot, lot more garbage to be taken out and cleaned up and sanctified by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We need to come out of that Christmas stuff. We need to come out of that witchcraft. Amen. I mean, everything is falling apart. I mean, the Democratic Party falling apart, Republican Party falling apart. I mean, Russia is, uh, 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 China is, 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 is wanting to bomb us, and, and North Korea is wanting to bomb us, and it doesn't make it, it doesn't make any difference if Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck was president. It's not Donald Duck, but it's Donald Trump, but and it's not Mickey Mouse. But but what I'm saying, Yahweh puts people up and puts them into position so that His perfect will can be done. You see what I'm saying? And he wants our eyes, yes, to pray for those that are in power. To pray for them that they might make the right decision. So we can come back to a sense of righteousness into our commandments in our country. Amen. But everything, amen, time, amen, is of essence. Time is very short. And not all roads lead to heaven. Amen. Everybody think, oh, we're all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. And then they say, well, we all see the J name, and it's not the J name. I mean, we got Jesus Martinez, we got Jesus Olivares, we got Jesus Aguilar, we got about 10 million Jesuses running around. What Jesus is going to be our Messiah? Ain't none of them because that name is only 402 years old. Fact, F-E-C-T. Before 402 years old, 403 they called him E.A. Zeus. E.A. Zeus. Sounds too much like Zeus to me. It's all Greek to me. And I don't like Greek salad. <laughs> I'll take Hebrew salad. <laughs> Amen. But time is running short. And, 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 and the question is, we got the victory. Hallelujah. We got the victory, hallelujah. We got the victory, hallelujah. Oh, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Yahweh is Lord. But well, we even want to get away from the word Lord somewhere along the line and try to try to get. But Yahweh is but we have the victory. If Yahweh is for us, who can be against us? We've got the truth. We have nothing to be ashamed of. We have His power. We have His might. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. What else can He do for us? Amen. Except for us, amen, to discipline ourselves and discipline our bodies. Amen. Our minds and our hearts. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 2. Amen. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh shall cometh as a thief in the night for those that are asleep. We're of the day. We are of the day. We are not of the night. They're of the night. That's talking about the people of the night. It's gonna, and they're going to be eating and drinking, marrying, being married. They're going to be into the lesbianism, homosexuality. They're going to pass a bill that it's all right for a married to marry Sue and blah, 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 blah. And there's something going to be happening. And they, 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 they think it's... Now, that, that's Spanish. Okay? 
And it's talking about in Ephesians 4.11. Can anybody turn to Ephesians 4.11 and read it for me? Ephesians 4.11 is talking about the apostle, the prophet, and the evangelist, the pastors and the teachers. Ape. You know what an ape? A-P-E. Apostles, prophet, evangelist. And then you got the pastors and the teachers. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. And he gave go some, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Messiah. Okay, so in the in the assembly, in the true assembly, we still have apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers. Amen. And it's to bring the body into perfection. Amen. To bring into perfection. So, so we need to be prepared. We need to know our apostles, our prophets, our evangelists, our pastors, and our, our pastors and our teachers. And they need to be instructing us how to prepare for war. Amen. If you're prepared for war, guess what? You're going to have peace. Because every day that you wake up, there's a warfare and sometimes in the members of this body. I mean, I might be going on 72, but a, a pretty woman still walking down the street is still a pretty woman. And that advocate, the devil, is going to say something. And, and I need to be aware that the devil's going to say something. Men, the Bible says that man, mankind, ought always to pray. The Bible says to watch and to pray, lest you enter temptation. For the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. We need to prepare ourselves for victory. You, in other words, you don't... From, from here to thither, you've got to have a plan to get from here to there. Because if you don't have a plan to get from here to there, you're going to end up anywhere. Okay? So, we need, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, we need to put on the helmet of salvation. Amen? And the helmet, it protects the head. And what is the head? In the head, you have the front. You've got the brain. With the brain, with the brain, you make decisions. As for me and my house, we choose to serve Yahweh. That's why we need the helmet of salvation. What is the helmet of salvation but this, the Word? We need to have this wrapped up and tied up. Amen. It needs to be living in us. Amen. Him in us and us in Him. Amen. And then you got the shield of faith. Amen. What is faith? Faith is a something of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Where can I get faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of Torah. Amen. So if these people that say they have faith, they might have a level of faith, but they don't know Torah. They don't know the commands. They don't know the name of their, the lover of their soul. Amen. But we are the children of the Most High. Amen. Yahweh is going to raise up his bodies. Brother, I want you to hear and listen to me. Yahweh has anointed you and anointed your hands to lay hands on the sick to be healed. We don't need to be embarrassed in public when somebody says, I have a migraine headache. And you just need to say, that is an open door. It's like, knock, knock, knock. Can you pray for me? Amen. When somebody says that they feel, they're knocking on your door of faith. They're knocking on your door of faith. And they're actually wanting you to say, can I pray for you? Amen. Amen. You need to exercise because if you don't exercise your muscles, your muscles turn to flat. If you don't exercise your faith, then unbelief starts to sneak in. we got to exercise our faith every day. We need to exercise. Amen. Uh, we need to do 100 push-ups, 100 set, whatever. You know, if we don't do those exercises, we, 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 our body tears down and we become, we become susceptible to sicknesses. Our antibodies don't work as good. But if we keep a healthy diet 
and we keep a healthy body, a mind, soul, and spirit. And we keep it healthy and we exercise not only in the physical, but exercise in the spiritual. And somebody says, I've got a migraine headache. You need to say, baby, you want that migraine headache to be gone. Let me pray for you in Yahweh's name. Can I lay my hands on? And can I hold your hand with you? Or can I lay hands on? Yeah, you can. Not this headache is just too much. I'm going to tell you a little story. Our grandson, his name is Anthony. We used to call him Boo Boo Bear. Amen. But we don't do that anymore. He's 32. Amen. <laughs> so so, so he, he was only about maybe what? Four, five, two. He was only two. Amen. I'm Paul Paul. Amen. And every time we go to the apostolic church, he'd be in my arms and we'd be dancing all over. That two-year-old little boy right next to my breast and I'm, I'm running the aisle with him. I go down and lick him and who get off the ground and who make his hands on somebody? You know, so he was at a daycare center. Our daughter had to work. And a lady that came in, she was a backslider. Okay. And she told one of the ladies, man, I got a migraine headache. And little Anthony, guess what he did all week long at that little daycare center? He would turn that chair upside down, that little plastic chair. He would take that and he would preach into it. <laughs> Repent. Be baptized. In fact, he got caught baptizing his sisters in the, in, 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 in the, in, in the bathtub and almost drowned them. <laughs> Amen. And he was a two-year-old little boy. Amen. Not be, speaking to having the whole English language in command. And, and, and the, the backslidden girl knelt down in front of little Anthony and said, Anthony, can you pray for my headache? They call him the little preacher. They call him the little preacher. He just laid his hand on the forehead. Boom. It left right away. Amen. If, if y'all will move for little Anthony, y'all will going to move for us. Amen. Amen. We need to, ex everybody say exercise. exercise. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to exercise. Need exercise. exercise your faith. Exercise. Amen. So here we have the shield of faith. You, you know, when you've got faith, man, you can move mountains. You've got the seed of a grain of a mustard seed. You can tell that mountain to remove from heads to yonder place. Amen. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of Torah. For without faith, no man can please God. So we, he did everything for us. All we have to do is exercise and we are preparing ourselves because we are the bride and we need to prepare ourselves for that wedding day. And of course, we've got the uh, belt of truth. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness. Isaiah 6 and 14. It's great bread. The, the breastplate of righteousness is also in Isaiah 59 and 17 and Philippians 3 and 9. Amen. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Amen. We need to speak to the mountain. Amen. And we, if we're so overwhelmed and we feel so weak and we feel so beat up, you know what we need to do? We need to pick ourselves up and, 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 and start dancing. Start dancing. And then start speaking in tongues. Uh, start talking to Yahweh. Amen. You need to start talking and start praising your, praising your way through that feeling. Praising your way from being down to get up. Amen. Because when you're down, the only way you can get up in a quick way is to start picking up your feet and start jumping up and down and start remembering when I think about the goodness of Yahweh and all He has done for me. My soul cries out, Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh for saving me. When I think about the goodness of Yahweh and all He has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh for saving me. Two more times. When I think about the goodness of Yahweh and all He has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh for saving me. This is the last time. From deep down from your heart. When I think about the goodness of Yahweh and all He has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh for saving me. Amen. The Bible says, Ephesians 6, 11, 12, Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts and wickedness. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand in the battle, if Yahweh is for us, who can be against us? We, need, we don't need to run away from the devil. We need to run into the devil because the devil needs to be running away from us. The devil needs to be running from us. Because the devil sees the blood of Yahweh HaMashiach. And the devil sees Yahweh's name upon our forehead. Because we confess his name. We've been baptized into his name. And he knows the difference between everybody else. Amen. So we need to understand. Amen. We need... We, we, we are the bride. We are preparing. We are in preparation through prayer. Amen. Through the reading of the word. Uh, forsaking not the evil gathering of the assembly so much you see the day approaching. Uplifting people. Giving people words of encouragement. It's too easy to give a word of discouragement. It's too easy to tear down. But it's hard to lift up. Amen. We need to go around lifting people up. We don't need to be tearing people down. We need to be encouraging them. Encourage means putting courage into them. Encourage meant. Encourage. You're putting courage in. Amen. Discouragement means you're taking, sucking the breath out of them, sucking the life out of them. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to be encouragers. Amen. We're, we're in a battle. Amen. But we need to be able to endure the end for he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved. Take a look at your Hebrew heritage right here. Endurance means amad. Amen. To take one stand. You've got to take a stand. Because if you don't stand for if you don't stand for something, you'll stand for anything. You need to take a stand. You need to get we need to have a backbone. We need to have his courage. Amen. We need to understand he's for us. We need to understand no matter how many how little people are following this thing, we need to know that we are right. Because we got the plumb line. And the plumb line is the Torah. And we got it written upon our hearts. Now take a look at it. Endurance. I'm not. It means to take a stand. Present oneself. Or become a servant of. We get strength from being a servant. I get strength from washing your feet. Amen. And praying for you. We get strength by being a servant one to another. Amen. That's not a sign of weakness. That is a sign of strength. Hallelujah. Amen. To become a servant, uh, uh, to suffer patiently. The Bible said to be long-suffering one with another. That is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is, is the actuality, the, 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 the fruitation or the notation that, hey, this person is really saved. Just check their Spirit out. What is the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Meekness down missing one of them. Long suffering, gentleness, meekness. Let's see. Meekness, Love, joy, meekness. peace, long suffering, gentleness, and goodness, meekness. faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. And faithful. Amen. Yahweh was faithful to us as a bridegroom. We need to be faithful to our, our wives, and we need to be faithful to our husband and our children. We need to be faithful because that is what our Father is all about. Abba Yahweh is about faithfulness. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us and will not give you any more than you can bear. And He will make a way of escape for you when you need to escape. So, Revelations 3, 8 and 10. What does it say? Hey, I know that you have little strength. Yet you have kept my word. Isn't it sometimes we don't we feel like we got a little bit of strength? We, hit, we, we, feel, we feel all sucked out and dried out. We feel like Yahweh just opened up the earth and swallowed me up. I don't know whether you've ever been there, but I've been there. Yes. Yahweh, just, what, what's my purpose down here for? And it's, just take me out. Just take me out. I know that you have little strength. You, yet you have kept my Torah and have not denied my name. You have kept my Torah and you have not denied my name. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour 
I will keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Brothers and sisters, Yahweh has already given us the victory. He just wants us to endure patiently, be faithful, as He is faithful to us. Amen. We don't need to worry about the outcome of this body. Amen. I mean, man might my, my, my put a gun up to you. Amen. But we don't need to fear death because, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? We don't need to deny one jot, one tittle in that Torah. He lives in us. That's another cute little song. He lives in me. He lives in us. Amen. So, we know. We know that there's going to be a seven-year time span. And here's another thing. A lot of theologians are saying they don't know whether it's a three-and-a-half-year time span. Because a lot of theologians are, are questioning themselves, was the first three-and-a-half years in the ministry of Mashiach? And then was it dormant, sleeping until the last three-and-a-half years? So there's that thought. I'm not saying who's who, you know, or boo-hoo, because it's not boo-hoo for us. It's been, amen. Oh, y'all will come quickly. Amen. Oh, y'all will come quickly. Redeeming the time. We need to redeem the time. When somebody talks to you, you need to you need to feel out in the spirit. Is there a door? Is, is he knocking on my door? Is she knocking on my door that I can give him a, a golden nugget? You know, to bring him a little closer. Amen. Joel 3. 9 and 10. Can somebody read that for me? Anybody? Joel 3 and 9 and 10. Pro That's Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. prepare. Does the Bible tell you to prepare? Yes. For what? War. For a party? For war. Ah, for war. Go ahead, sister. Wake up the mighty men. Uh-oh. Wake up the mighty men. These apostolic so-called bishops and pastors and evangelists, we need to wake them up out of their sleep in Jesus' name and wake them up to His real name. Go ahead, sister. Let all the men of war draw near. Let all the men of war. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Let them come up, not down. Beat your plowshares into swords. Beat your plowshares into a sword. And your pruning hooks into spears. And your pruning hook into spears. Remember, Yahweh's word is a sword, a double-edged sword. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say that I'm strong. Did you ever feel weak? Yes. Everybody say, I'm not weak. I'm not weak. But I'm strong. But I'm strong. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. But I'm strong. But I'm strong. Look at your neighbor say, you're not weak. You're not but you're strong. But you're strong. Amen. Everybody give y'all a hand clap because he gives us that strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you, did you finish on 10? Yes. Amen. So now we, we see that Yahweh is calling us to war. And we know we're living in the last and the purpose days. Amen. But it doesn't need to be a surprise to us. We need to expect the worst for the unbeliever, hoping the best that the unbeliever can cross the river Jordan and become a Hebrew. Amen. And embrace his true heritage. Amen. Somebody do me uh, Joshua chapter 1, verses 5. Yehoshua. Chapter 1. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 5. Verse 5 uh, through 9. Yeah, yeah, come on up here. You can you sit right here. Yehoshua, chapter 1, verse 5 through 9. And I'm reading through the uh, King James 1611 version. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moshe, so I will be with thee. Stop. If he was with Moshe, he's going to be with who? Us. He's going to be with us. If he was with Moshe, he's going to be with who? 
us. Hey, don't be, that, that's a promise. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I will not fail thee, nor forsake you. Wow. I will not fail thee. Governments, presidents, congressmen, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters will fail us. But he said, I will never fail thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance, the land which I spare unto their fathers to give them. Amen. He said, be strong and be of good courage. Brothers, that should be our pride. Y'all will make us strong. And, make it, and when we're feeling down, we need to lift ourselves back up. We need to lift this leg up and that leg up and start it to go and put a little music on and start praying and speaking in tongues and get that devil running. Go ahead, sister. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may observe to do according to all the law. Oh, part of the law? All. Oh. Some of the law? All. Oh. None of the law? All. Oh. The law was finished. All the, law. All the law. Which Moshe, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand uh -oh. or to the left. Uh oh, turn not to the left or the right. It's a straight and narrow way, for straight is the way and narrow is the gate, and few want to enter into it. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. This is this is the word of Torah. Amen. And this Torah is a promise to us today in the 21st century to hold on to it. Amen. To put the devil underneath our feet. Devarim 20 and 4. It says, For Yahweh, your Elohim. Devarim 20 and 4. For Yahweh, your Elohim. One more for repetition. Devarim 20 and 4. For Yahweh your Elohim is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Is, does his word lie? Is his word true? And every man a liar. A liar. <laughs> Remember, there was a preparation, baby. There was a preparation of Noah's Ark. Amen. I'm not talking about preparation H. I'm talking about preparation to get on the Ark of Noah. Amen. But you see, Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahweh. Amen. We have found favor in the eyes of Yahweh. What was this Noah preaching? He was preaching the kingdom and the righteousness of Yahweh and nobody wanted to hear him. Think about this here. Let's just pretend for a moment. Eight people were saved. Let's say 10 million people were drowned. The ratio was 8 to 10 million. Think of that today. <laughs> eight people out of 10 million. Think of it. Yeah. Wow. Could that be the same type of devilish attitude that's in the world today? Yes. Uh-oh. That's why we need to prepare our hearts. To prepare for wars. Amen. And in the Hebrews, amen, 11 and 7, it says in 11 and 7, by faith, not by unbelief, but by faith, no, he prepared himself an ark. And having been divinely instructed, that means Torah, concerning things that he had not seen or being moved by pious fear, he prepared, there was a preparation to his madness. He prepared, he made a plan. We have to have a plan. From, from hither to thither, we have to have a plan. We had a plan. Our daughter had a plan. She bought our, our, our son-in-law and daughter. And they had a plan to buy a mobile home. They got a great deal on this mobile home. I mean a great deal. It was a gift from Yahweh. Amen. And moving that great deal from hither to thither with a big old porch. They, 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 they didn't 
they saw, you know, it was out in front of the house for about a year and a half, two years. A year and a half. So, uh, so I said, listen, uh, can can we have it? So, so I had a I had a vision. I prepared, exercised my brain to get that from hither to thither, and right now it's hooked up to our back porch. Amen. I want to thank you for our porch. It's such yes. a beautiful porch. We just fixed it yesterday. Amen. But there was a preparation. There was a plan. There was a movement on the plan. Amen. We need to move with the Spirit. We need to hear His voice. Sometimes His voice just speaks to us in the Word. He says, Go ye out into the world and to preach to all nations and to preach my gospel. I heard I hear people say, Well, I gotta hear it. I gotta hear his voice to tell me to do that. You're not hearing his voice because you're not reading the word. The word already says it. Yeah. Well. So John 14 and 2. There's all already a preparation. He said, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prepare. You see, there is a preparing for the bride. Now listen, the bridegroom is preparing a mansion for us. He's preparing a place. Now, why would he prepare and not the wife prepare? What's the wife got to prepare? Her heart. How does he prepare her heart? Exercise her faith and keeping the commandments because she loves him. She adores him. She is head over heels over him because he paid the price for her. Laid his life down that she might be a bride. What man of you would lay your life down one for another? But this man laid his life down. Amen. I prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Amen. You see, get, to get from here to thither, from this old world, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then Yahweh would I do. The angels beckon me to heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Yahweh, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Yahweh, what would I do? The angels beckon me to heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I don't know about you, brothers, but I can't feel I can't feel too much at home. <laughs> it don't feel like home, no matter what you do. You don't pay your taxes on the land that you bought. See who comes and takes your land. It used to be Uncle Sam, but now it's Uncle Chan because it's the Chinese that own us. <laughs> no more Uncle Sam with Uncle Chan. We're going to have to start learning Chinese. <laughs> Amen. The pride is being prepared to be brought into Shamayim, into heaven. We're looking to go into Shamayim. Amen. What a day that will be when my Yahweh I shall see. When I look upon His face, the one who saved me by His grace. And He takes me by the hand and He walks me through the promised land. What a day. What a day that will be. One more time, I like that. What a day that will be when my Yahweh I shall see. When He picks me by the hand and walks me through the promised land. Imagine what a day that will be. Amen. Man. Almost could taste it. Almost could taste it. Amen. Revelation 21 and 2. It says, I saw this holy city, that new Jerusalem, 
coming down out of heaven from Elohim. Prepare. Prepare as a bride. A new city coming down prepared as a bride. You don't have a city without inhabitants. It was the bride to inhabit a city. Because the scriptures tell us that city coming down is the bride coming down. A bride beautifully dressed for her husband without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. In her walk through this perilous times, we need to understand we might have lost an inning, but we didn't lose the game. It might seem like we're down, but it's just waiting around and we're going to be up. Amen. Romans 8 and 28, 31. And we know that all things, good, bad, or indifferent, and we know that all things in the losing of a job and getting cancer and the loss of a loved one. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh and to them that are the called according to His purpose. What shall we say the, then these things? If Yahweh be for us, amen, who can be against us? Amen. We need to remember our promises. Be prepared. Amen. Have that armor of Yahweh on be prepared for the war. Be prepared for the battle. Be prepared to go home. Amen. We need, amen, to be prepared. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I believe that we're going to shut down real quick. There have no temptation. Remember that. Nobody can force you to fall down in sin. No one. The, the, Satan has been destroyed. The power of life, hell, and of death has been destroyed. Amen. We have power. The Bible says we have power over every devil demon, serpent, and scorpion, what do we have to fear? Nobody can say, well, she forced me to go to bed with her. Nobody can force you to go to bed with anybody. Nobody can force you to take crack cocaine. Nobody can force you to do whatever. The Bible says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Remember, temptation is not the sin. It's the falling to the temptation after the lust of our desires. No temptation hath taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh is faithful. Everybody say, Yahweh is faithful. Yahweh is faithful. Amen. Amen. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will make with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Today, even today, this late age, Yahweh is knocking on the door. Hasson 3 and 20. Behold, I, Yahweh, your Savior, Hamashiach, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and he will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, some people don't like to hear all things, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Amen. We see the mercies of Yahweh HaMashiach are still open to the sinner today. They have the right. We are the reapers of the field, brother and sisters. The field. We are in the field. Amen. We are reaping. Amen. The wheat. Amen. We are the reapers. We are the angels that Yahweh sent. There's two types of angels. There's the angel of the flesh and the angel of the spirit. The angel of the flesh are the reapers. How, how do we reap? By giving people the word. And if they refuse it, they're putting themselves into the position of being the tear. Mm -hmm. They separate themselves from us. Instead of embracing the wheat. Amen. So we know that, amen, the time is very short. Amen. There needs to be a calling to repentance. There needs to be a preaching in the highways and the byways. There needs to be at the bus stops, the, 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 the truck, tractor, trailer stops. Uh, we need to get the message out on the street. Amen. We need to uh, get bold like these stupid people that are full of the devil and run up and down the street and, and bash windows and set, set cars on fire and turn them upside down. We need to be that bold to get out and to preach and teach the name of Yahweh, to preach His command and let them know that there's mercy and grace that still can follow them all the days of their life and to have miracles 
signs and wonders because the Bible said that the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. And I believe that we will see that the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. I believe that it's going to be us, amen, to be used in the gifts of the Spirit, amen, to have the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, to exercise it, and we're going to start seeing. Y'all was going to start answering our prayers like that. And we're going to start getting, whoa, wow. Oh, wow. And we're going to start getting more bold and more bold and more bold. Amen. Y'all was calling the pride. Amen. We need to be prepared. Without spot, without wrinkle. Isaiah 54 and 5. Mark it down in your spirit. Mark it down in your spiritual man, spiritual woman. For thy maker is thine husband. Do I know my maker's name? Have I been baptized into my maker's name? Have I confessed my maker's name? The for thine maker is thine husband the yellow of hosts is a name thy redeemer the holy one of Israel the yellow king of the whole earth shall he be called amen everybody that might be listening to us that are watching the screen if you're still doing the Saturdays and the, if you're still doing the Sundays and the Christmases if you're still calling God by a false name other than Yahweh and the Bible says the third commandment is thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh your Elohim in vain do not bring Yahweh's name to nothingness. Do not add to it. Do not subtract from it. Uh, do not... And nobody knows the name of Yahweh. They're all breaking it. Amen. Mercy upon them and grace upon them. But if you are still calling Yahweh by a different name, you need to confess the mess so He can clean it up and confess Yahweh HaMashiach. He's your master and your savior. There's still time. Whosoever called upon the name of Yahweh. Amen. It states Yoel 2 and 32. Acts 2 and 21. Romans 10 and 13. A threefold cord cannot be easily broken. Three witnesses. Yoel, Shaul, and, 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 and Kepha. They said the same exact message. Whosoever calleth upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Because he's going to write his commandments upon your heart. Amen. And to be baptized, immersed under water. Totally immersed from head to toe. Amen. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Amen. From head to toe, baptized, immersed in water in the name of Yahweh Hamashiach for the remission of sins. Amen. Have you been baptized in the precious name of Yahweh Hamashiach yet for the remission of sins? There is still time. Kepha must have said, Acts 2 and 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear viewers, we are living in the last days. We invest time and effort to bring you quality content for the benefit of your soul. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. You will receive notifications on when we upload new videos and when we stream our services live. If this video has edified you, give it a thumbs up. Finally, spread the truth around the world by sharing this video in every way you can. Thank you for watching.